uh, shipping is this essential player in our global economy. And regionally here um, in Southern California, we've got uh, a port, ports that operate as hubs for thousands of vessels. Um, the ports of LA and Long Beach uh, actually host roughly 8,800 arrivals and departures per year. Um, and about 60% of those actually transit through our home area in the Santa Barbara Channel, as well as just south of the islands. Um, and this activity is great. Um, these numbers become a lot more meaningful when you actually consider that these are huge vessels that are longer in length than the height of the Eiffel Tower and can carry hundreds of billions of dollars of goods on board. Um, like I said, activity is good, brings a lot of commerce, revenue to the region, but unfortunately there are some consequences associated with all of this activity. And I'm gonna talk specifically about two impacts today. The first is the impact on local air quality and the second is the impact on our local endangered marine wildlife. Protecting the North Atlantic right whale population that exists over there. 
Um, and they've actually estimated that slowing vessels down can reduce risk 30 to 50 percent. Okay, so this is all a lead in for this program that I'm talking about today. We've learned that slowing down vessels is good for air quality as well as really good for these whale populations in the area. So with that in mind, a new approach in 2014 was tested um, by NOAA Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, by Santa Barbara and Ventura County Air Pollution Control Districts, Environmental Defense Center, and the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. And the general idea behind the trial was pretty simple, and it was this. We're gonna pay ships to slow down to 12 knots or less as they transit through the Santa Barbara Channel, thereby hopefully reducing air emissions as well as protecting these whale populations. Um, it's a really new concept. Um, it's a non-regulatory approach. Um, it's based on these incentive payments. Um, the other added benefit to these shipping lines is that we, they do receive positive PR as well. Um, but it was a novel approach. It's um, something most people have not tried. So part of the effort was really just trying to see what kind of buy-in we could get from the shipping industry. How willing were these shipping companies to participate in this type of program? And is this idea really feasible? All right, so in terms of results, um, really cool, promising results from 2014. Seven shipping lines participated in the effort 27 transits were successfully slowed. Participating companies were paid around $2,500 per incentive trip. Um, the program ultimately did see huge reductions in emissions with 12.4 tons of ozone forming nitrogen cut, as well as over 500 metric tons of regional greenhouse gases. Um, but most importantly for the purposes of today, today's talk, 2014 really set the stage for a larger scale program in the future. It proved that there is this buy-in um, and that the program could be scaled up in the future. Okay, so fast forward to 2016. We're really excited about the project this year. It's something I spend a lot of time on personally. Um, and it's something that uh, is largely modeled off of 2014, but has been expanded both geographically as well as financially um, to try to maximize the impact that we see from the program. So thanks to our partners this year, we actually have double the funding um, to enroll more than twice the number of transits in the program. Uh, we've also added a scaled payment system, which pays more for historically faster vessels, as well as gives the shipping lines the option of opting into several bonus payments. Um, some examples of that are, if they're willing to travel 10 knots or less, they actually get an extra bonus payment um, if they're willing to prove that they adjusted their schedule, uh, basically to demonstrate that they aren't speeding up as soon as they leave our region and passing on these impacts to other areas. Um, and the last is whale sightings data. If they're willing to provide sightings data as they transit through, um, they get a bonus payment associated with that as well. Um, geographically, at the urging of participants in 2014, we added this Western VSR zone, which is really the zone that goes just south of the islands. Um, uh, and it's unofficially recognized uh, Western voluntary lanes that really are the basis for why we chose this track, as well as with consultation with NOAA researchers um, who are trying to better understand cetacean density. Um, at their recommendation, uh, we expanded into the southern zone. Okay, so the 2016 program is still underway. Um, it's gonna be going until mid-November. So I don't have full term results for you to share today, um, but we've had a really exciting level of interest um, with over 300 trans 375 transit applications received for 2016. Um, we've had 10 shipping lines uh, enrolled to date with actually 13 interested overall. Uh, 65 transits are enrolled to date and that's completed by 27 unique vessels. Uh, we've only done compliance check, like I said, we're still midway, so we've only done a compliance check for about a third of the transits that are in the program at this point, but so far we're seeing about 75% compliance or higher for all of the transits enrolled this year, which is pretty cool to see. Um, and then in terms of those bonus options that I was mentioning, we've seen a ton of interest in signing up for those, so we're seeing from these shipping lines that they're willing to go farther um, and actually do more than what we're asking them at this point. If you look to the screen on the right, 
Um, it is the whale sightings report that I was mentioning earlier. It's basically the way that we're trying to collect this data from these shipping lines. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, a good example of these guys going above and beyond what they're being asked to do, if you see it on the screen up here. So that last slide showed you the form, which is how they're supposed to supply the data. They're sending that, and then they're also sending annotated maps from where they're seeing all of the whales during their transit, as well as supplying photos. And I particularly love that this guy is pointing to the picture. Um, but it's really cool. It shows that these guys are engaged. They're willing to help us out. It's also proving that this is an untapped platform for data collection and it's worth pursuing in the future. Okay, so if there's one thing I wanted to leave you guys with, it's just that these types of incentive-based programs are proving to be effective, and perhaps more importantly, they're scalable and adaptable to all of these different shipping behaviors. Um, and we're excited to share our results in November once the program ends. Um, and prove that these non-regulatory solutions are possible um, and prove to be effective.